Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to another edition of In The Metal. As you might know by now, In The Metal is a lighthearted conversation uh, with myself, Dan Spitz, former Anthrax man and now US master watchmaker in the process of creating his own masterpiece as we speak. And we every week we are joined by uh, an amazing guest, and I have to say, every week, each guest is absolutely amazing. Uh, they are watchmakers by profession. They uh, work all day in their ateliers, creating some of the most spectacular timepieces that uh, that are available anywhere. They're historic. They're famous. They'll be historically significant in in the years to come. Even now, they are so. Um, so this week we are going to a castle in the canton of Neuchâtel in Vomacos, uh, where we will be joined by a guy whose little team of crack watchmakers manufacture some of the most mind-boggling creations you've ever seen. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's just beggar's belief sometimes the creativity, the invention, the vision, the imagination, and not only that, but the ability to be able to turn that into a living, breathing piece of mechanical art. And uh, that's a hell of a thing, isn't it, Dan? How are you keeping, my friend? I'm just a crack watchmaker, bro. <laughs> crack watchmaking team, absolutely. <laughs> Crack so, uh, only the best, only the not, best. Not, not, I, think you, you got, I think you got to be smoking a little bit of crack out of the pipe there to be like us, anyway. <laughs> I think you'd be smoking a bit of crack to be a uh, former president of the United States. Well, I don't mind me saying, like, you know, <laughs> I think that's what he was doing. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, uh, anyway, uh, politics are verboten, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, this is this is killer, man, because uh, the masterpieces that come out of his. Lucas Workshop is, I mean, those who don't know are going to know in about a minute uh, that they already knew, if you know what I mean, but they just didn't know. Okay. They didn't know where it came from. And that's what's cool about independent watchmaking. And we're exposing me and you, Johnny, what we said we would do in the beginning, all those ghost builders. I keep saying that word. I know it was never used probably before me and you did this show, you know, in watchmaking, but it's used in the music industry. You know, it's like ghost writing a song. You know, well, that's that's what Luca's workshop is. They're ghost builders. You didn't know who they were, but today you'll know who they are, and you're gonna be your mind's gonna be blown. It's just, it's amazing. Totally, totally. It, 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 it really is amazing, Dan. You're not exaggerating. You're not bullshitting. Like it is. Some of this creativity is is astonishing, and, and every single week we get to see these uh, uh, something that is is as it's never fails to. to leave you take your breath away really does it yeah. you know so uh, but here this is this guy that we are going to talk to tonight is uh, a, a wonderful guy he's very rarely seen mm -hmm. in the wild he is a, a <laughs> watchmaker who's <laughs> like most of us <laughs> <laughs> well like exactly like that's what i say this is the the hidden world the rarely seen world of the independent mm -hmm. watchmaker because they're always burrowed away in their ateliers working day and night with little loops on their over their eye to catch what's going on like this one mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, so um but this guy uh he doesn't make watches for himself he makes watches for other brands and one of the watches uh, the the brands that he'd be most famous for is uh, a luxury jewel uh, tycoon uh, Jacob and Co. And man, the work that he has done for Jacob and Co. is stellar. We will be taking a look at it very soon. But what do you think? Should we go across and see if that man is up in his castle, Luca Soprano? Can you hear <laughs> us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey look, uh, I, I don't know if I'm a crack watchmaker or a crack watchmaker. You know? Listen, man, when, you, when you're talking about Ireland, you know, everything's a bit of crack, you know. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. you, should know that. you know one or two Irishmen, don't you? 
Yeah, I but actually my teacher in Worcester was uh, Stephen McDonald that he was in your interview like uh, some weeks ago. <laughs> and I'm really pleased to see him. And uh, I know John McGonagall and um, and also Stephen McGonagall, the two brothers. I have the so chance to uh, to know them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in once again, see, look how we just start this right away, Johnny. Right? Almost everyone we end up talking to somehow, some way. Uh, the the most step school that I went to, right in Neuchatel, and you're you you were, you're still stuck in Neuchatel. Yeah. I was supposed to go back to the the family shop, is uh yeah a long time ago, but finally uh, you know <laughs> he, de he deserted the family. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, my my my, gra my grandfather, I think, it was. Uh, yeah, was complaining about me staying in Switzerland for like uh, five, six years. Yeah. Yeah. And after he got used to it, but <laughs> he, he gave, he gave up. <laughs> well, it just shows, uh, Luca. What, um, what, I, what I, another thing I've been trying to get out there from the underground is the impact. This that is my have. my aunt. <laughs> oh, 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 the family, hey, hey, the family. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 we, we've been trying to get out um, the impact that Antoine Simonet. The, the creator of the Wolf Step course, uh, what he what he's done for all of us. For without him, I don't think any of us would be uh, where we are because he is the, the co-creator of that Wolf Step course and pushed yeah. it through. Uh, it was only that one little school in Neuchatel that, that we could all go to. Way back when I went, that was it. There wasn't, the curriculum was nowhere else. Yeah, it didn't yeah. Exist, well, yeah. That, that was very, very cool. It, it brings uh, internationality to to the watchmaking because we wear a lot of uh, watchmaker all over the world. Ciao Giuseppe. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and uh, we wear a lot of watchmaker all over the world uh, that we have no chance to come to Switzerland because Switzerland was difficult access to official schools and stuff. So this was very good. And it was really good to bring a certain level of quality of watchmaker also outside of Switzerland. Well, and what happened that a lot of us did the wall step at the end of the day, uh, we we stayed in Switzerland, so right. now there's plenty of uh, wall step watchmakers, foreigners. That they, they are here, yeah. Yeah, yeah. but the other the other uh, part to that uh, situation was back when 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 after, I, you know, I did four years of school at the Boulevard School. Prior to that, many years of apprenticeship and all that kind of stuff. Uh, most of us do, but back then the reason uh, wall step was so big for us, for people who are maybe perhaps a little younger or just uh, thinking about getting into watchmaking now or collectors is there was schools in Switzerland, but none of them would teach in English. So it was really closed to the rest of the world. You could apply, but you had to speak fluent French. So as soon as uh, Antoine Simonet developed this curriculum and opened the school, it, it was taught in it's multi multilingual. And that opened the door for people like myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. I mean, for uh, for me, it was uh, anyway a challenge because I have to learn uh, English, you know, because I am Italian. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was good, you know. You you learn, uh, you, you improve your skills of uh, language, language, and then after, if you want, is a big advantage when you get out in the watchmaker watchmaking industry because you you are a watchmaker with a good knowledge with a reputated school like Wostep, and then you speak several languages. So a lot of us, we end up in training and uh, and uh, after the service, international where, after the service. Where did you where did you end up after Wostep? So first work I did, I was an after the service manager in Vulcan. And uh, I worked a lot for a Japanese market at the time. And, uh, and when I was there, since I was a very small company, I, I had the chance to work on some complicated piece they were doing with Claret. At the time, Claret was really the, the reference for all complicated piece. And then I started to get interested in to, to go behind the just repair watches, but to make watches, to start to understand like how to create a watch, how it really works, how you can build it. Then I worked there, and then I moved to, to Vianne, Vianne Halter in San Croix. For uh, for five years, and it was that was really my school. That's where really I learned to use uh, inventor, to use machines, and where I met a lot of uh, of uh, my friends. And some of them they're still working with me after we re, re met again after years. 
And then after Vianney, I went to BNB. It was this crazy company that then BNB bought back by Hublot, where we were doing a lot of uh, double axe turbines and uh, crazy, all kinds of crazy complication of kind of turbines. And then I have uh, the, the last part of my work as employee. I was working for Patek and Rolex, one after the other. So after this, I decided I have to go independent. I cannot uh, be in this kind of very, very strict uh, structure for, for watchmakers. Yeah, you ended up usually where people start. And then that drove, <laughs> yeah. that drove you crazy to it's like, I can't. That's not for yeah, me. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but that, that's what I say a lot often to the to the young watchmaker. They ca they come here. I say that uh, they should arrive here only after experience, like real company, you know, because there you really learn uh, rules, a certain kind of uh, behavior, uh, responsibility for uh, for what you do, and you're always under control, you know. Right. And uh, if you get straight away here, what is absolutely freedom. You, you get lost very fast, especially if you're a young watchmaker, because at the beginning, you really need the rules. Right. Totally understand. Agree. Absolutely. Wow. So, so tell us a little, little bit about um, your, your workshop and how many people work there um, and uh, everything that goes along with that. Yeah. So we are a, a small workshop of uh, five watchmaker plus one, uh, my business partner, that is the business part of the workshop. Because uh, I realized straight away that it was absolutely impossible for me to take care of the of the company alone. So uh, is uh, yeah, we are uh, we are two business partner. Is the finance and organization, and me and mostly on the creative part and not taking care of the of the workshop. And uh, we do a lot of different stuff because, you know, since we are a, a small workshop, it's very important to have different fields because industry is so unstable that uh, all of a sudden you, you have to change your, uh, your main business, your core business. So mm -hmm. we do restoration. That is uh, always a good, stable business that keep the workshop, I would say, alive. So we restore mostly pieces for big brands. Uh, they are more than uh, 25, 30 years old and also older than this. Mm -hmm. We do restoration of special pieces for uh, private customers. And this, this part is very useful for us to see all the mechanism, how things were done and get mm -hmm. inspiration for me to see uh, different wow. uh, techniques mm -hmm. and different uh, mechanical approach. And uh, then we do most of what we do is development for for brands and prototyping for them. So the idea of the workshop is really to be 100% independent. So when we do prototyping, when we do restoration, we don't go through uh, suppliers or very rarely. But once that the, the prototype is done, especially if it's a production, so more than 10 pieces, Mm -hmm. uh, we 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 work directly with the brand, so the brand is doing the production, or we work with the supplier that is doing mm -hmm. the production for the brand. Mm -hmm. So that's a little bit what we do. But we really, really try to do, I would say, hundred percent of uh, of the things we do. A mix of uh, handmade. We we don't do hundred percent handmade because, for me, is not the the issue. For me, is more the challenge to do. Uh, crazy thing for me. Watchmaking is is mechanics. You know, is uh, mm -hmm. is not uh, cleaning and polishing and making bevels. It's also this. Is also a skill that you need, but is something that uh, is not the real challenge of a watchmaker. I would say. I mean, people like uh, George Daniels. Uh, they they were more into into mechanics, mm -hmm. and uh, they were not focusing on uh, on finishing, yeah, finishing stuff right. like so 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 yeah. much that that don't mean that we don't do finishing that we are not we don't try to do traditional way is the thing is that for us is not the main skill of a watchmaker our watchmaker need to be good on lathe on uh, machines and uh well i think <clears throat> i think what you're trying to get across that we should all should try to get across across to collectors is an understanding and the difference um there are there are if if the company is a small company of one, two, three, four, or five watchmakers, right? We're all independent and we're running an independent shop. And our main focus, our love and our passion 
is the beveling and the finishing. We, we all know that the watch has to be finished to a certain standard. And what happens then is we don't really have time to manufacture from start to finish all the mechanics and keep designing the next mechanic or the next timepiece. You can't do it all. There's not enough time in, in a year. Forget about it in a day, right? So people concentrate on what their passion is. That's mm -hmm. that guy's a watchmaker's passion. That's his story. He loves finishing. He'll sit there for 47 days and finish one bridge. Other people, I'm very similar to you. You know, right now I'm designing my unique barrel system for my timepiece. That's what fascinates me is the machine, the gearing and all that. The finishing will be amazing. It'll be incredible. But if I concentrated just on that as a one man show here, I would never be able to keep pushing forward and, and do some breakthrough mechanics for my country. And yeah, yeah, I think also it's a question of, of philosophy of uh, watchmaking. You know, uh, for example, now I would say this uh, I would call Geneva style, like uh, they really, really pushed since uh, all the time with the Geneva seal and everything. They pushed a lot in the finishing. But then, for example, in the lock, the shutter phone, when we were more focusing on performing of the watch, timing, precision, and uh, uh, yeah, efficiency of the watch. They, they were less focusing on, on this. They were just like doing very nice finishing, uh, clean, but it was not the, the main value of the watch. The watch was something that it was mechanically unbelievable, right. uh, top, uh, top notch. Mm -hmm. yes. So that, that's really some kind of philosophy. Now, I would say the market is really, really moved strongly to this way of a highly finishly, finished piece. Where the challenge is uh, uh, inwards angle, uh, beveling, and stuff like this. Uh, it, it, for me, is a little bit a pity because uh, uh, the, the real challenge is to, to really make your own watch, uh, create something a little bit different, get inspiration for a traditional uh, watch mechanical idea. So that's why, for example, people like uh, Strella, for me, they are really, really. Uh, impressive watchmaker because they really are uh, mechanical genius mm. and that's what is for me a, a watchmaker a watchmaker don't worry, there is a job there is an angler or uh, there is people that are just doing beveling and they do it absolutely top quality mm -hmm. but for me this is another job that is separate for from uh, from watchmaker I totally agree with you 100%. I'm yeah. glad you I'm glad you just said everything you just said because uh, people need to hear that and so they have an understanding uh, to di to differentiate, you know, the collector. If he's a collector looking uh, to purchase something or uh, what appeals to him, if he wants the shiny blingy bling bling bling, he, he'll 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 pick this brand A for that, you know, and it might be a wonderful uh, sound mechanical timepiece. But if he wants to see, you know, a crazy crack watchmaker, the mechanic, you know, come to someone like me or Luca. And, you know, when you look at the machine, you know, you, you're, if, you, if you compare it to cars, you know, you're looking at, you know, you're opening up the hood of a Ferrari or a McLaren or something like that. That's, that's, that's watchmaking. That's why we go to school. That's why we have our passion is, is the mechanics. It's all that shit that's spewed out on our desk, all those parts everywhere, and you look at it and you got to put it back together or figure out how to build one yourself and look at it and go, I still can't believe to this day if I put all that stuff together in this something this small that is going to do what was in my head. It, it, it blows our own minds. So right. that's, we're that's just trying to blow your mind. <laughs> often, often. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, that's that's cool. a good point to, uh, uh, about your 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 philosophy and your your approach towards your watchmaking because what you're more or less saying is that you you specialize in the technical aspects of it, the engineering the mechanical uh, complexity of the of the piece where you know really the decor the finishing the beveling the anglage the mirror polishing the all that type of thing that's another skill. On its own, yeah, yeah, it's, an, it's another skill for sure. There are excellent watchmakers that are also excellent finishers, like for example, John McGonagall. For me, is somebody that is really excellent in all the fields, you know. Also, yeah. but but I would say, you know, when you start to be a little bit older watchmaker, you start to understand also what what are your skills and what you can focus on. So. Yeah. So that's what we did. So if you want, it's like this. We, I really believe in teamwork 
And uh, the teamwork of uh, our workshop is like this. Everybody is, uh, is of a special skills where it's absolutely better than the other. And then, yep. um, and then there is um, a, a combination of the different skills. And then after you, you learn from one or the other, the one maybe very good in finishing can, can help you to improve the finish on what you do. But uh, I would say everybody here is really focused on the on the technique. But as I said, I mean, you see the the piece that we did uh, we did for for Derek. I mean, like the 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 finishing we we put there, we really put uh, a cool. lot of effort because we 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 know that this kind of watch anyway need the maximum that we can do as finishing. Well, would you but, like to start? Yeah, we've got a number of we've got a number of images. Uh, uh, to, to to show. So we'll, we'll, maybe we'll start with the uh, the Derek watch that you're talking about. Derek yeah. being uh, Derek yeah. Pratt, right. yeah. who sadly passed away in 2009, mm. and uh, before the his his uh, masterpiece was ever before he he never got to see his own masterpiece. Uh, you Luca, got picture, you got a picture of the movement there. Oh, have I got an image of what, <laughs> you, what, do, what do you think? <laughs> the watchmakers, I don't want to see a dial in a hand. <laughs> hey. We Is did the hand, a, but we dial. didn't do the dial. I, I have to admit, you know, <laughs> I don't want yeah. to take um, credit for things that I didn't do. So we did the hand, yeah, but the dial is not I our... Have been, <laughs> I have been well and truly put in my place. The dial is American, brother. <laughs> Sh I mean, shut up and get on there. You wanted the movement, sir. The movement. Yeah. Okay, okay, well. Okay. So, yes, yeah. I have a picture of the movement. This oh, is... That's yeah. so killer, man. Yeah. 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 I, actually, we have to see, I mean, that... Uh, also, the, the the picture is a, is a is a great picture because the the, the photograph is also a very good photograph. <laughs> it is. <yeah. laughs> that, but, that is uh, really good. That is really really amazing, what, man. Yeah. What what are we looking at, Luca? What are we looking at? So this is the if you want in the in the past, um, Derek was always doing this kind of remontoire, that is uh, one second remontoire, uh, on a tourbillon watch. So he was willing to do a center jump second, that, that beat, uh, with a stationary remontoire de galité to show that this, uh, this escapement was so performing that you can have the same performance as a, as a, as a tourbillon version of this, uh, of this escapement, this, uh, Remontoir. So you see it here on the on the on the right, mm -hmm. and uh, with the cam. So we we actually do ruby cams like um, like uh, Derek was doing, and we actually took at the beginning really the um, components from uh, from uh, from Derek uh, pieces. So actually the the pallet fork and uh, the, the the fork sorry of the remontoir and the cam. They are really taken from uh, from Derek uh, drawings, and uh, Derek also wanted that bit second. So we tried to put the two things together. Mm. And what is really amazing that is absolutely true. What uh, Derek was uh, was uh, hoping to have as result. So the the watch is really timing like uh, great, mm -hmm. and the stability of the amplitude is just unbelievable. So we have a uh, I would say less than five degree variation during the the while the remontoir is working, because wow. the, the 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 good thing also of this escapement the, of this remontoir is that it's working on one second. So the I, I don't know how you call it in uh, in English lissage the, the cleaning of the timing and the uh, is very stable and it is very frequent but if you go to a remontoir that is working on such input and any at each impulse is uh is, is more difficult to get this uh this really stable value so for me it's really the the, the best uh, performing option of the of the remontoir so was it was it derek's idea for for the one second remontoir yeah 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 it's absolutely the the the, the drawing reference the 
the concept was absolutely Derek Remontoir that he was using in the in the turbines. That's and really he did uh, two versions of the uh, cam. He start with the steel cam, and then he moved to ruby cams. At the end of the day, it's just more complicated to do because you have to to make your own cam in in ruby. <laughs> but mm -hmm. the the performance of the steel cam and the ruby cam is is basically the same. But of course, the other challenge was really to do this uh, this ruby cam. So actually, on on this piece. Uh, Everything like the Rubicam, Airspring, and yeah, balance stuff, balance uh, all the components that you see. They were they were manufactured here by by us. Hmm. Wow, wow! And so, so um, in your we workshop, use existing existing pallet jewels, but, uh, but you it happens also that we adjust them. Yeah, yeah. yeah you yeah. see the difference of the picture. This is picture that we did. <laughs> 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 that's great. <laughs> that's, that's this, great. This, this image is of the, the movement in, in your atelier. Uh, yeah, yeah, atelier. yeah, yeah. So that, that's the picture that we did. <laughs> Very slick. <laughs> that's, that's just as crazy to me. I don't care. That's great. <laughs> and uh, one thing that I forgot to say that also the other thing that, that Derek wants to use is the motor barrel system that was a system of a flying barrel mm -hmm. where yeah. the the drum and the and the barrel arbor they are uh, uh, monoblock one piece of steel mm -hmm. so it's really really delicate system but you, you really want this to be to be there as a signature because you really really like this uh, this system yeah you want to know why you want to know why because it's American, brother. <laughs> hey, but I mean, it, it, it is because it's, the, it's what's going in my watch, too. Yeah, it's, you're, you're, uh, you're uh, that's what I'm working on. Uh, my version of that is being worked on now. So there's your little secret for you doing this. But yeah, the motor barrel system isn't something. Just people have to know that the, there's some kick ass American uh, watchmaking pedigrees here. That we kick some serious ass from over here, man. All the oh, way back, for sure, for all sure. way back over your way. Yeah, uh, that's, uh, and, and it's up that all up. Elgin was uh, was an excellent uh, an excellent brand for sure, for sure. Yeah, yeah no, and uh, actually, we have one American watchmaker in the workshop. Huh? <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, the, yeah, the motor. Just for people don't understand, a motor barrel system is uh, to me it, it's so much better than a going barrel. I mean, it's just it's more it's it's less complex but more complex and difficult to manufacture. So for yeah. uh, for most of the brands. Uh, uh, to make a timepiece with this, it's too costly. Uh, and that's why it's finding its way now into my timepiece because it, it takes a long time and in, in, in my own version of it and in, into this because as watchmakers, uh, even Derek, uh, as you could see, has recognized that uh, the system is, it's, it's, it's incredible, man. It's a, it's a workhorse. It yeah, doesn't yeah. work. I, I have, I have a, an old pocket watch on my desk here with a motor barrel system that's 125 years old and there's zero wear in that system. Zero. Yep. There's no adjusting of the barrel. There's no reaming it out. There's there's no barrel lid problems because there is really no lid. It's a whole different theory, and it, it stands the test of time of longevity. But you're also on this watch. You guys uh, also work with a, a, another American, not in your workshop. Uh, if I'm correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, uh, if you want the motor barrel system, uh, is something that I use very often. <laughs> Oh, really? And uh, yeah, in, in, I used it in other, in a different ways, also in other, pro, in other watches. And in the watch that you're going to talk about, uh, since the beginning, we, we start with a, a motor barrel system. So the, also there, the, for, I said for an American, it's good to have an American system. You know? yeah. <laughs> That's why I put it in my watch. <laughs> well, here, to, to a simple man like myself, the difference between a motor barrel and a going barrel. So the, there is there's the arbor that is in the center of the barrel usually or most commonly is providing the drive down through the, the gear train. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the going barrel, the arbor itself goes through the barrel lid and the barrel casing. OK, so yep. as the as time goes by, let's say, I mean, there's many facets to it. The, it one's turning, one's not. There's wear and this also uh, uh, let's say push or or uh, extreme push from the mainspring on tilting 
tilting that and wearing that that uh, hole uh, hole out so the barrel could move in a in a motor barrel that sh that that shaft at the bottom is actually part of the barrel uh, that holds the main spring it's all one piece the barrel mm. and that and then that that goes through other pieces on top and so on yeah, so yeah. Oh. depending on the manufacturer also, the, the other uh, performing parts is that uh, at the end of the day, you don't have a cover. So the, the kind of cover is, uh, is the gearing part. So, and then also to having the, the solid steel drum is also very, very performing. And, and it's double jeweled. Uh, we can jewel, jewel at the top you and, do, it's, and, it's kind of, and it's kind of floating. Uh, yeah, yeah. So actually, uh, the, the version on, on the Derek piece is, uh, is a flying motor barrel. Yeah, yeah. 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 Awesome. Uh, yeah. Mine's, so, mine, uh, my, ver my version is going to kick its ass, though. Oh, fantastic. Go back a little bit. So what I want to say, what I was saying earlier was, um, this is the, the project of this timepiece. Is you, you also worked with another American watchmaker, uh, mm -hmm. uh, or, or he is part of this project, correct? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, actually, the part of the team is uh, Stuart, that is uh, an American watchmaker from uh, South Carolina, mm -hmm. originally. He also did Wastep, he worked already with Vianne, and uh, he was really, really at the beginning of the, the, the birth of our, of our workshop. So he's really part of the team since, uh, since the beginning. Yeah. Yeah. He's, and he's absolutely one of the, the best um micro mechanic uh watchmaker that uh that uh, that i know but you know we are we are really really international team i mean we have uh i am italian my business partner in french then we have Stuart that is american we also got some swiss huh? we have a very young talented uh swiss watchmaker then we have some uh, japanese also very talented wow we yeah we come a little bit from uh, all over the world and, and as far as making the parts that you were just discussing in your workshop, are you utilizing, uh, 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 of course, you're using, utilizing shablins and our, our, our normal yeah, tools? Yeah, of course. We, we do, use, you, uh, do, you, do you have CNC in the workshop right there with uh, you? We, well? I so, Stuart, there is a, a kind of really genius in this kind of stuff. He, he creates his own small CNC, very simple, very basic, that we use basically to do, it's, it's kind of a, a performing pantograph. I would say it's very really easy to program. So we use the simple DXF and we just uh, adjust the heights. So you work on the three axes. Uh, of course, it's not a machine for production, but it's very precise. And, and we use this for, for cutting out mostly things. Then everything that is turned, we, we turn uh, by, by lathe. So small uh, line and lathe, American again. <laughs> then we... <laughs> We we use Schobling lathe, seventies small eight millimeter lathe. Uh, uh, Sierra, we, we there are all kind of machine here. After maybe we can do a yeah, yeah, yeah. a trip around the workshop. I show you a little bit. What, so what, 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 what the are. reason the reason I we me and Johnny always ask those kind of questions is it's uh, to educate always to educate people that because they uh, they have this preconceived notion that if you say the word CNC that you just push a button. And like a part, just like how many do you want? Like, like Forget up, about right? it. And we just put it together. You, you know, know, like, it's, you it know doesn't, the, people, it does the, not work like that in independent watchmaking. All it does no. is get us a, the same raw part. It looks like crap when it comes off there usually, but it's precise because if it, if that first part isn't exact, we'll get it the second time or the third time, and at least we can make two or three and test what we're doing and, and move forward. C correct, Luke? Is that it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I totally agree. I mean, at the end of the day, it's very simple. I tell you, we don't have uh, high-grade CNC uh, for m two main reasons. First, uh, nobody here is able to use it. <laughs> we cannot program CNC machine, complicated CNC machine. We, we can program. I, I can program, Stuart can program the Sullivan 2, the, the CNC machine that we have because it's very basic. We use... Uh, how you call it? Uh, uh, a very simple, 150 box uh, uh, program to 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 do the programming. Very simple. Mm -hmm. So because we don't have the knowledge to use it properly, and of course because it's too much expensive for a small workshop for us, like us. But if I have a hundred, five hundred thousand box 
to put on a super duper CNC machine and the uh, and the chance to learn to use it. I mean, tomorrow I, I will buy it. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, you know what though? But people tell me afterwards, even if they do find the money or possibly do the wrong thing and find an investor to, to spend the money on it, then they find out that you can't turn it off. And their electricity, <laughs> their electricity bill is ten thousand dollars a month. That's the part they forgot to tell them. No joke. <laughs> oh, it's true. So it's true. It's uh. I think, I mean, the, also this, I mean, we did, uh, we do a lot of handmade parts. I mean, for the handmade piece of uh, of uh, Global and Force, we did, uh, for example, one piece. They were in a rush. I mean, they they talk about it with the, on, the, on the price, during the price. Uh, we did one handmade piece for, for them. We can do handmade piece quite complicated. So you were but part of that, you part of that team on, on the handmade? Uh, we we were not part of the team. They they were in a rush. They they need some parts handmade. This part was quite complicated, so they asked us to to give a hand with, with one piece. It's not that we because no, my good friend really, uh, my good friend Luke from uh, Arts Mechanics. He's, yeah, he yeah, was yeah. part of that team, and uh, he, yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah, he, so, he, he was really part of the team. Was doing yeah. a lot of uh, a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He's a, he's a, he's. Badass, yeah. badass, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. So people, people have to know this. Look at how we all, everyone's somehow, somewhere uh, behind the scenes in, in independent watchmaking and being uh, what, what I call us, a lot of us, ghost builders, which is what I used to do with, with Showpart and other companies, is there's a lot of us who end up working together even if we don't even know we're working together some, some, sometimes, some ways. So it's this whole backstory that we have to let people in on it and know what what we're doing because we're busy at the bench doing our whatever we're doing and sometimes there's an NDA and we can't discuss things. So mm -hmm. it's really good that people understand we're not just one guy in one room alone and we don't wanna, you know, we don't wanna hang out with anybody else. It's just like music. You know, we do want to jam. We want to jam with other yeah, people. Of course, of course. So I mean cool. but for me is is the, the most important thing and what it was in the past uh where watchmaking was very strong is that all the uh, watchmaker were talking together. They were in school. Most of them, the, 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 they were teaching, doing uh, timing course and everything. And so they somehow they keep their secret. And sometimes they 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 teach the their secret to other. They share knowledge. They share experience. And that's that's why I, I always like to say that I'm always a student. You know, in this in this job, I always been a student. I mean, I learned from my grandfather. Then. Uh, I went to Wostep, I learned from uh, from Steven, and uh, then uh, I went to Vianne and learned from Vianne, then I went to BNB, also there I, I learned a lot. And uh, and now I'm still learning, learning from the other watchmaking working, working with us, uh, learning with, uh, try to learn with, um, from every field, it's interesting, when, when you are doing some bigger project and you work with brands, you also learn the, the way of working that is also interesting. Then you, when you work with some suppliers for the brands, you discover people that they have a big knowledge of micro mechanics that you don't have that they can help you. They are happy to help you. So this is this is what is really really important in the in watchmaking field for my, for me. It's really to share the um, the knowledge mm -hmm. and to to help each other. That, that that's what something maybe is, is a little bit lost. Mm. Well, I think uh, we're trying, and at least I'm, me and Johnny are trying to, to to bring even more people together in independent watchmaking, and, and of course to to uh, to further it along because uh, it's come a long way very fast, and uh, we, you know, I, most of the people that we have on our show are the top top dogs in 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 what we in what we do. I mean, let's face oh, it, you know, for sure, for sure. I mean, like yeah, I would say that uh, people, all, people all the that they're, they're you, you got you, yeah. Most, Thanks most God, people. I am uh, I am one of the last one in in the list because <laughs> before me they were very good. So <laughs> well, 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 we're trying to show collectors or people that are interested in watchmaking, not just the watchmakers, but them actually them as well. Is that you know they were buying those name brands and once they rose the ladder, you know they bought a Rolex, then they bought a Patek, then they bought a Vacheron Constantine, whatever they, they were moving up the ladder. They hadn't even known about independent watchmaking yet, but yet the pieces inside their timepieces were already coming from people like you, you know? And and th these people didn't even know that. So now we're just trying to make collectors aware the reason you like that timepiece is really not the big brand because the big brand really couldn't even really achieve it at the small level of, of doing those one-offs or 10-offs. They had to come to people like you 
well, like Neil, whoever they are, because yeah. we're, we we got a, more than one school lose. <laughs> you know, you know, in, in the, in the, uh, yeah, in the yeah. past was already like this. I mean, people like Victorin Piguet, uh, Leon Aubert, they they were like genius. Uh, and the, the the only thing they were doing were they were creative for the brands, but brands they were selling properly what uh, what they were doing. They, they they and they but they make all the study and the 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 idea of the watch. All these uh, crazy astronomical watches, also very nice caliber that uh, Victorin Piguet developed. I mean, they are, they are just uh, just amazing and of a quality of a design of a taste. That now we don't have anymore because watchmakers they are no more involved in the in the in the production. They are more, no more involved in the real development of the watch. So the watch have to be industrialized, engineered. So uh, it's, it's creating this kind of uh, uh, I don't know you can uh, cast you know like engineer and watchmaker, and uh, they don't like to work together. And of course, since you are a watchmaker, all the time when you have a meeting with the uh, twenty uh, super duper engineer coming from uh, I don't know NSA or uh, uh, BMW, whatever, they they look at you and say, "What do you want? I mean, you just a watchmaker. You barely able to do like a basic math." That that's also true. I mean, what what we work is is we say it in French, you know. Uh, uh, on travail au pif, we work with the nose by feeling, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes it works quite well. Mm -hmm. I would say for for them for direct piece, uh, I basically don't need to do spatial calculation. It's like uh, is uh, is uh, it was working well uh, already with the dimension and stuff that Derek did also with not so much calculation, but the performance. The quality of the of the idea was very high, and, and now this is totally lost. I mean, now what is when a piece is made have to be this size, a certain thickness because uh, the the sheet of steel that they buy they are zero thirty, they are not zero forty, and, and so on. So this you will see it in the in the look of the watch. You know, screws are all the same. Uh, they use tube everywhere. Uh, pins are all the same size. Jewels they use the, as much possible, as much as possible the same jewel. Uh, of course, makes sense for like uh, do a, a scale uh, economy, mm -hmm. but uh, you lose the the taste of the uh, of the product. Yeah, it's like uh, buying a, a McDonald burger and then buy it somebody made by uh, a chef gourmet. Yeah, somebody that uh, try to do it at the because, because make it as, the best as as watchmakers, true true watchmakers, we're, we're the ones that are true dreamers. We're not think we're thinking. We don't even we we're, we're bad, usually bad businessmen. <laughs> That's really the bottom line. We just <laughs> we see a vision and we don't care if all the jewels are different sizes. We don't care if all the screws are different sizes because we want to make this masterpiece that it, it's it, it's not can't be made in series. It would bankrupt the company in a month. They wouldn't even get past the boardroom. That's basically mm -hmm. what we're making. And then we, on top of that, we build it to last for centuries and centuries and centuries. And on top of that, the, the top of the top of the heap of the independence are building it where anyone, even after that gentleman is, is gone, any competent uh, traditionally chain watchmaker can pretty much make any part inside that watch in a workshop like mine or Lucas. So you're safeguarded forever. In 20 years, uh, for a brand name watch, they don't have to sell you any parts anymore. They don't have to manufacture them. It's a Swiss law. So yeah. that's, oh, well, what are you, you going to do with your two hundred thousand yeah. dollar name brand watch, right? Yeah, you, that's, that's exactly what, uh, what what happens now. I mean, like with this very nice uh, uh, movement from the from the 50s, 60s. I mean, if we, they come for restoration, we can do any piece. We can still do any piece. If you do, if you use this like kind of Liga, uh, silicium, or this kind of uh, high technique stuff, you're screwed, man. You're screwed. Uh, then you screwed. I mean, I or you have a, a company making this kind of components. I don't know. Uh, but if you have to remake these piece, maybe in hundred year, all this stuff you have just uh, they are just junk. It's junk. It's, it's, you're all screwed. Just and it's coming from 
Luca, you know, and, and me too. And it, there's a lot of us. Uh, you know, it's good for series type of work and that kind of stuff. That's what it was really kind of invented for. But look, we, people like Luca and I, we've gone through the schooling. We've gone through Wostep. We've gone through doing endless vintage restorations for years and years and years. We've seen stuff that's very old. Oh, way older than we, we all are here and twice our age on our bench and we can bring it back to life like brand new sometimes as good as the day it left the factory well that's our goal anyway but sometimes even better because technology has moved forward uh so we like to stick with those materials and those special materials uh and that's that's how most of the independents are why we're building our stuff so if you look at us going why aren't they using silicium and uh, kryptonite, whatever the freak yeah. is the next, the next thing. Kryptonite, I would like to do a watch. <laughs> That's why, you know? <laughs> uh, but, well, we had the kryptonite guy on last week, all the glowing let's, stuff. Let's, let's, Johnny, show, show, show everyone the other insane stuff that he works on. Well, <laughs> I, okay, I was letting this take its flow, but uh, you, you uh, had a, a, an encounter with... Uh, uh, do you know, a, a, a guy who was an established jeweler and uh, was looking to really make his, his imprint on the the world of uh, luxury watchmaking, but it wasn't just luxury. He wanted to go all out, and uh, do yeah, that, that, that's the 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 absolutely crazy, incredible thing about this man. That when he right. does it, he wants to get it all of the, yeah. the absolutely most. Impressive, uh, is, is uh, Crazy. always get it to the top, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he sure did. Uh, so, uh, who are we talking about? Jacob uh, Alabo, and yeah. uh, so, uh, who his company is, uh, to his, as I said, New York jeweler, high like, his customer list. I was looking at some pieces earlier on, and uh, <laughs> damn it all, man, you got uh, absolutely all of the, 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 the top rap artists like Dan Spitz and uh. Uh, yeah, but, I mean everything like uh, football players, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, not just any football, uh, football player, Cristiano Ronaldo. Well. If you don't, you know, so he's walking around wearing your uh, your um, SF twenty four, which is the first piece you worked for the Epic SF twenty yep. four. Yep. Wow! So here uh, this. T tell us a little bit. This was your first piece for this, this was yeah. absolutely the the most uh, crazy development I I ever did because this watch at the end of the day was, was really invention. If you want uh, all this kind of uh, system of a uh, uh, flap system mm -hmm. that they are mostly in the trains they were in the train station and the airport. Yeah. They all work by, work by gravity. So it was absolutely a challenge to find a way to make it jump and keep it stable so you can have it working in any position. Mm. So we absolutely, we, we try to do something, uh, yeah, crazy. And I uh, was the first, the, the only time I would say that one, one night, couple of months before we have to deliver the watch, I was uh, on the bed in the workshop because we were working really day and night. And uh, I was not able to fall asleep because I say, this is never going to work. Never <laughs> going to happen. And then at that time, Stuart came. He bring me an ice cream and say, oh, it's going to work. <laughs> <laughs> ice cream fixes everything, man. <laughs> Thank God for ice cream. And, uh, and then, then we got it. We got it running. I mean, it was uh, was a really, really big, uh, big challenge because we tried to do it in a very short time. Also, there we did all the module. Also, you know, all the flap. We we cut it with our, our CNC. All the tooling. Then we bring it to the guy doing DLC, uh, DLC treatment mm -hmm. to get the black done and. Uh, you know, we made the posage, I bring it to him. We, I was watching him doing it too, because we have very few spare parts. So I really hope that it doesn't, it doesn't get damaged. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was really, really uh, an epic <laughs> experience. <laughs> Is that why it was called epic? <laughs> That's great. So uh, yeah, we have a close up of the, the, the shutter now. This is a, a later 
iteration of it, but uh, probably not done by yourself. But the same, it's using your uh, your your mechanism, your module. Yeah, so if, if you want, we did uh, for this one. We did uh, four working prototypes. Mm -hmm. And then after we passed all the technologies to a, to a production company because out of these they were done I think 120 piece. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. So is uh, but if you see it up on I don't know if my mouse is working or showing something but near the 12 on top there is this rail that is really the the tip of the whole uh, idea is to really to keep the the shutters in in position okay <laughs> and then right. you know what's really difficult is that the this piece are always in uh, under control in a rail just in the moment when they are turning they are free so it have to be so fast that it is impossible to create a a moving so there is always a controlling of the of the shake of so the, the piece. so the bottom the bottom piece is is uh attached to the the center gears and then the upper pieces that flap are attached to the left and right upper holding pieces yeah if, if you want it's like a drum and uh, every single shutters have a, a click that keep it in position and when and then when it turns from top to bottom for example the 12 is turning to become one turn down to bottom the click bump into the rails and turn 180 degrees mm. and then the next one is coming over and is already turned so if you want uh yeah it's quite difficult to explain it by words but is uh yeah, yeah, yeah it was a humongous challenge actually i still remember when when we present this one of the shop that it was um selling jacob and co pieces was uh the Audemars Piguet shop in uh, in Geneva, uh, Mont Prestige, and uh, the war they were there. The old technical director of uh, Audemars Piguet, uh, an old man that at the moment, sorry, but I don't remember the name. Mm -hmm. uh, and he came to me, he started to play with the watch. He looked at me and he say, "You know, we were we were doing this uh, this system in the in the seventies, but finally we never go on because we thought it will never." work properly and it, it was a, it was good for me to, to have this uh this old very experienced man that was there in the in the very good time of the of the watchmaking that he was uh saying wow is uh, something that i didn't expect to to happen <laughs> so yeah so people need to understand we don't just people like you uh who have to think up stuff like this we don't just have sleepless nights. See, Johnny, right? We always say, all right, lots of sleepless nights, you know, because I don't, I have them the same thing because we're, we're thinking, ah, it could be weeks, could be months. How the hell am I going to make this work? It's never going to work. Luca has sleepless nights. He don't even go home. He sleeps on the workshop. <laughs> He's, <before>. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, for, for this project, for this project, <laughs> I was true. living, I was living in the workshop with Stuart. We were the two day and night living there That's we, metal, we I, I was obliged to go to the to the toilet of the and the shower of the <laughs> next workshop because we don't have one <laughs> <laughs> we were eating there living there and every morning at uh, six o'clock i was waking up going back to lausanne where i was living at the time and bringing my my kid to to school because i mean uh, I was never home, so I want anyway to have the chance from time to time to see my kids. But for, stars, though, like man. from December to <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how we wait. That's how we made albums and stuff. You're sleeping on the recording studio floor. You're not going home till we get that last riff recorded the right way. You know, it's in our brain. It's the same thing, man. It's so cool. <laughs> Yeah, and people have yeah. this idea that uh, these, these are really glamorous lifestyles, you know. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, no, no, it's not it? glamorous at all. It was absolutely <laughs> <an item>. uh, <laughs> yeah. so, a half we, million dollar watch, and you're lying on a cowboy head. Like see, it see, <laughs> Don Luca, what we're trying to say is what, what Johnny just said is a lot of the collectors have this this preconceived notion. It's like, yeah, if you put this guy together and that guy together, why don't we just get them together and they can just make a watch? You know, and, and we can sell it next year. We can make like a hundred of them, and it just doesn't work like that. Every time. well, not not what we do. You know, it's it's it's, it's mad scientist stuff. Mad scientist. That's that's I've come to the conclusion. I mean, I, the, the, but that's where I mean, relationship, friendship, they they get built. 
For example, uh, with two of the watchmaker where I work most in, in the workshop here, uh, really the, the, the strong relation was built during these people when we were working day and night, when they were, uh, you know, there was uh, one of the team was coming from Le Loc Le, at, at night to doing the work and the next day was, uh, was going to work because at the time we were just two and we need help, help from another one. And, and at that time, we built a, fr a friendship that is just, uh, uh, yeah, endless. So you really, you become blood friends, you know, really. Yeah. And that's also how the workshop built up. So we are all in the same boat, in the same shit <laughs> in some period, <laughs> and we get more and more close one to the other. So, of course, uh, none of us, and also for me, me I, now I talk for for the workshop, but uh, of course, without my, my guys and what we do together, I mean, nothing ever will be, will be there. Any, Without, of those guys, any of those guys metalheads? Sorry? Any of those guys uh, metalheads? Uh, not guys, not much. Listen, I mean, do you guys I mean, listen the, to music over there? Do, do <laughs> yeah, yeah they music? listen. We listen to music, but it's, it's quite quite mixed. I mean, like uh, me, I I like uh, uh, listen to to classical music when I work. I like jazz. I, I don't like. Uh, too strong music, you know. I need to to listen without listening, you know. Uh, uh, Stewart listen to ca any kind of uh, he likes crazy music, like you know, like uh, crowd rock, and he listen to some weirdo American radio <laughs> independent. Uh, make it, uh, when, when he's playing this radio, everybody is like uh, pissing his pants off because we we don't understand. We barely don't understand the jokes. The music is absolutely insane. Some Japanese people singing, I don't know, Yodle or uh, other <laughs> kind. And, uh, but, but it's fun. It's fun. We like it. For me, it's the memory, for example, the period when we were working day and night because Stuart was listening to this radio. That's great. That's great, man. Yeah. That's great. I so here, this, we're going to go back to the, the epic SF-20, uh, Van Kat, uh, that you, uh, so that, that was your uh, introduction with uh, with Jacob and Co. This is your swan song with 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 the brand. So uh, yeah, yeah. it's also it, the birth of uh, of my workshop. So actually, he gave us the the chance to do this watch, and we opened the the workshop, and we opened um, the, the structure. Wow! Then there was uh, the next chapter, which is quite uh, celebrated, quite a storied chapter as well, because it was just about as mad as insane as you could uh, uh, ask for it was the the astronomia <laughs> um <laughs> what, what what a thing how how did you co uh, it, come up with this what was the what was the what was the the brief from jacob to uh, to create this watch uh, the the brief from jacob is uh, is jacob jacob is a living brief you know if you stay next to him is uh, you you understand it straight away what uh, what he wants? It was something that yeah, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> no this was the picture. The, this was the picture that we took, but you missed the first one. The first one we were uh, like uh, embracing each other, and this one is doing like this because he said, "Okay, this picture you will keep it next to you if the watch will not be ready for bar affair." <laughs> Oh, so you know what is going eyes. to happen. That's great. <laughs> it's not, no surprise you were sleeping on the floor, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you know, he's a big dude. Huh? He's like 108, 190 uh, tall and is a just massive guy. <laughs> <laughs> so you actually, so, I mean, his hand, I mean, I have big hands, but his hand is like double of mine. He's <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, quite scary, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you you better do what you're told. So uh, hey, what what did he think when you showed him this, or the drawings for this, or the concept for it? I mean, like uh, this is absolutely his style. I show him the drawing. It was just like basic drawing. Everybody in his team was like laughing at us. Ah, and then uh, it's never going to work. It's impossible. It's, it's, uh, it's crazy stuff. Uh, no interest, no interest. And he said, he say, I want it. I say, 
I want it. This is going to be uh, a hit, I'm sure. And uh, is uh, is like this. Is it was a total gambling, and uh, and then after it, be, it came out to be really uh, uh, a piece that uh, also thanks to his uh, his way of being, his uh, like fancy glamorous approach, it became a, a humongous success, a huge success. And for this one, we did the first seven piece. We did it ourselves completely. So. Oh, wow. Everything they see there, also the globe, uh, the e, he take charge also of the diamond, mm -hmm. and uh, and then the first seven piece we we did ourselves, and he, he still wears uh, the number seven that we we did is the is the the piece that he he still wear himself. Nice. So um, we are quite proud of uh, of this thing. But uh, right, oh, so so. Uh, 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 Look, this is a watch that is a spectacular thing. It, you know, it, it's uh, yes, uh, Joel. It is a masterpiece. Uh, it was. Dude, whenever I first saw this, I, I, I really didn't know what to make of it because there really there was no precedent for it. There was nothing that, that I had seen. It was it was ever anything like this, and uh, so it was. Uh, it really has become. And I call and an amazing, uh, as you say, an amazing success uh, for for Jacob. And uh, so I think we have some images of the uh, of the prototype stage of that too. So um, now this it, is this it? is the, the this is the no. prototype of the minute repeater version. The minute repeater. Then we better carry get on. Yeah, with three hammers on. and yeah. That this is what we talk about last time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, if I don't get this right down, it's going to fire me. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, this is this is this is this the, the one that you came. Uh, yeah, also this one. This is how it was the the first uh, prototype that uh, that we did completely here. Wow, this amazing! Is, uh, right, completely. Yeah. And, and, and it is a uh, yeah. This is the still uh, still our piece. You recognize because the the cage is really classic cage, inspired by the yeah classic design. The globe we did ourselves, and uh, yeah, is a uh, yeah is a crazy crazy piece that we did. But at the end of the day, also this is absolutely uh, watchmaking. You understand what I mean? Everything is done in a way that you can. We did all the piece with the, our small lathe and cutting machine, milling machine. Oh, yeah, this is a nice picture. Is you see very well how it's done. And you see the motor barrel, you know, the barrel that is with the two beyond in the center there. Mm -hmm. And uh, yes, is uh, but it's really classic watch. Is the idea was really to to give uh, uh, to make uh, I don't know, make it impressive the the tourbillon itself. You know, normally the tourbillon is something that always always in uh, one corner, at six o'clock, uh, mm -hmm. hidden up by the dial. Or put under in the sometimes, so it's nothing that is not is put in advance, but is not pushed far the concept. So the idea, yeah. the idea was really to make a turbine in a way that you can see it from every every side. So really remove all the material around it mm -hmm. and com compact the moving the movement just to the to the to the center part that you see there. To make mm -hmm. it uh, as nice as uh, easy to enjoy as possible, you know, <laughs> like uh, we we call it uh, kind of bling uh, mechanics. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's actually perfect. It's actually perfect. But on top of, it, on top of that, look at what it, what it does is it shows people that yeah. you know. Let's take off all the boundaries. You know, we are in a stage where nobody needs a watch. So independent watchmaking is what? What is it? It's it's whatever we want it to be, whatever our art is. If this is Jacob's art, and you know your your genius brain to to help create something that's never been before, you draw it, and everyone says it can't be done, and then you go, screw you, watch us, you know, and, and, you, and you actually and you actually execute that. Then well, you know, for me, that's that's like us developing the you know thrash metal was the same thing, right? You yeah. know, music and music no one ever heard before. Everyone said it sucks, sounds like shit. But, you know, then eventually it takes over the entire earth and it sets a new trend for many other kinds of music. 
Um, yep. You know, or mixing heavy metal and hip hop. You, you know, you can't do that. It's impossible. Well, when someone says it's impossible and then one person believes in you, that's all it really takes. Yeah, yeah, that, that, that's, that's what it was really, really, uh, what I really appreciate of, uh, of Jacob himself. It was like the only one in the watchmaking industry that dare to give us a chance. You know, th this is really uh, somehow American. You know, the, the, the guy is ready to gamble on a small workshop of uh, funky dudes uh, to, <laughs> to, to, uh, who, who sleep on the floor in a workshop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the guy is, uh, is a guy in charge of production. When he came to the workshop, he said, uh, I was planning to come with my dad to show him the, the workshop when we do these beautiful things. And finally, I think it's better because, you know, my, my dad is not, is not young anymore. And he, this looks more like a squat, you say, like this. This place where it's a mess and uh, they <laughs> occupy the, the place <laughs> than, than a workshop. Actually, it was. <laughs> no, it's incredible. But, but, but he, like, tell us a little, bit, a little bit about this because well, this entire mechanism rotates, yeah? Yeah. So actually, ah. at the beginning, we have a rotation of uh, 10 minutes, and then we did some tests to go down to five minutes. So if you want, the complete four arms, they rotate around the center in, uh, in 10 minutes. And uh, the tourbillon cage have a rotation of, uh, of uh, sorry, the, the second axe. So the cage is turning on, uh, on the second axe, on the horizontal axe, in, yes. uh, in two, in the, sorry, five minutes. And the tourbillon cage is doing normal turn in one minute. Hmm. So the humongous challenge of this watch is mostly uh, equilibrium of weight. So the cage has to be top calibrate. The top and the bottom of the block that is turning on two axes have absolutely to have everything the same weight. And the four arms have to be equilibrated one on the other because when you go on the cut position, it's just a mess. So the, wow. for example, the globe. The first piece that we did, we did a beautiful, with Keith Engelbart's uh, globe in white gold uh, with animal, uh, uh, grand feu, uh, absolutely top quality. And it yeah. was uh, three grams. The watch was barely turning. <laughs> when it, was, it, was like, it was totally blocked. And, uh, and so we end up now is on this version, when you start to work, you have a, a, a globe made out of magnesium and the weight yeah. is 0 0.17 grams. <laughs> so wow. we uh, reduced the, the, the weight uh, a lot. So we have to change completely the thing. So also the globe was a challenge. The diamond was a challenge to make, to find some supplier. This was Jacob challenge to find supplier able to do such a, an incredible cut with 288 facet. At the beginning it was 50. It looks like a, a, a you know, small stone for, for game for kids, no light, nothing. And then we came out with this crazy stone with 288 facet that is shining like hell. Mm -hmm. And then the yeah. dial is always staying straight. So we have a differential system where, uh, where the, the dial turns anti-clockwise every every turns and the hours actually also turn anti-clockwise, but you don't realize it because they turn anti-clockwise a different speed from the, from the, the dial. That is insane. insane. Yeah. Actually, 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 talking about this, when we did the prototype, uh, we, I made the wrong calculation of the number of gearing and we assembled everything the, because I didn't realize that the hands have to turn anti-clockwise. So instead of turning, uh, re <laughs> losing one turn by by turn, I was gaining uh, the one turn plus going forward. So it was absolutely wrong. And then I was desperate. It was like uh, I don't know, a couple of weeks before Basel Fair. And then I called Stephen <laughs> Stephen McDonald and I said, <laughs> "Listen, you you are gorgeous guys in maths, and we absolutely made a mistake here. Can you find a solution?" And he was like, "Oh yeah, no problem. You have to just uh, change the ratio." And and then after <laughs> we were <working> right. Ah, <laughs> oh, so Stephen McDonald is your savior. <laughs> That's, that is amazing. Back to your teacher. Back to your teacher. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to pay back the fact that he destroyed my life to bring me into watchmaking, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and obliged me to say. <laughs> it's your fault. You gave me this pain. You need to solve this equation. <laughs> so, so now you owe me a favor. Please yeah. take me out of this humongous shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's so great, man. Uh, it is amazing. No, yeah, like I, I've awesome. often wondered about that, about that watch, about the uh, the mechanism, uh, yeah. uh, about well, what kind of tolerances there were, you know, for for the weight, because everything had to be absolutely perfect, and yeah. everything had to balance out its opposite number and. Same yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, 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 honestly, the, the 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 real challenge of this war, of the watch, are the weight. I mean, the rest is extremely. Uh, simple mechanics that a uh, simple watchmaker like uh, like I am, like we are, uh, we can do, we can manufacture. So all the components are really uh, simple. We try to keep the number of wheels as minimum as possible and everything as simple as possible. And uh, the, the real challenge was really, really the weight because it's, it's something that is very difficult to control, especially when you do most of the part by hand with the uh basic cnc machine the finishing you know you do everything by by end two there is no pre-beveling whatever so everything is a little bit uh, different so th this was really really the big challenge of of, of the watch so keep this uh, this equilibrium within the different comp components was really really the big challenge and you you're making gears and pinions in the workshop as well yeah yeah everything was done here i mean the only thing that we we took from uh, production hands are done here we took some standard jewels uh some of the screw we we took existing ones some other we we made on purpose uh the balance wheel was uh existing escapement that then all the rest we did everything everything yeah. we count the airspring we we prepared the the escapement with totally redo balance stuff and uh, and also mostly the the escapement we were not happy about the performing and uh, yes yeah, but everything you see there is done by by us also for example for the first piece the the piece of venturing this blue stone yes. it was uh, was a uh, Takashi that uh, did them one by one by file to put it in the in the gold piece. At the beginning, the really really first prototype, we also wanted to do case, mm -hmm. and uh, finally we decided that we have enough work to do to do the 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 complete yeah. movement. So we from after the first piece, the also the case was done by by a supplier. Really? Wow. Absolutely, but yeah, really really we we really try to be. To be to be independent in everything. For example, on the first really first pieces, at that time, like ten years ago, more or less, all this humongous sapphire <laughs> domed was really absolutely new. The uh, uh, sapphire company were not doing this yet, so there was only one company doing this, or very few, and uh, their polishing system was not yet. Uh, uh, at its best, I suppose, because they do it in the rush before the fair. So we try to do it, try to 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 test it, and so we end up helping them to polish the sapphire too. So re really, we were involved in every every every. It's really manufacturing process. Can Money is really um, manufacturing. Is it possible to to show us around your workshop just for a minute or two? To yeah, yeah it's like okay. I don't. I don't know. I, I try to. Okay, so this is uh, uh, wait. It's more interesting to see the lathe. So this actually somebody working on the lathe. So we have one seventy two for everything that is turning. Mm -hmm. You see something or yeah. but tilt it down a little yeah, bit. Oh, it's perfect. This is good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. There you go. And what then was, we have, go, uh, of go, course, go uh, a go, go, machine go. when we cut most on the wheels and pinions. And then we have uh, some basic tools for uh, for finishing perlage, wood polish machine, perlage. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, somebody oh, switch on the light. Then we have this uh, lathe. We use this system when we center. 
we center the piece on the on tilt the it, wait. Tilt, it, tilt it down a little bit more there you go perfect okay the on the outer machine uh, we do the optical centering and then we bring it to the this uh this system so thank you viane to teach us this system yeah, wait, 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 wait. yeah i've seen that at v, at v, at v what is that is it uh, what is that lathe that the uh, that the M1 you take the spindle out of the M1 and it fits into yeah, that uh, yeah. that lathe there? Yeah, that is uh, that is the, the the machine. So actually, these these are parts of the machine that are coming directly from Derek, and actually he was also a big champion on this uh, this system. So at the end of the day, you you center on this. Uh, wait, okay, you can get it right. Okay. You center on this turning table, you center with the optical tool, mm -hmm. and then you put it on the on the lathe here, you close it here, then you make it turn, and then with the with the uh, the the cutter here you come to align the holes. So this is very helpful when you when you want to align the holes for the piece mm -hmm. for precise turning. That's good, and then uh, we have uh, plenty of stuff, of course, uh, all kind of uh, microscope with the uh, camera mm -hmm. there. Beautiful. Then uh, is uh, our home-made uh, uh, plating system. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that works great. That's the way you do it right there. <laughs> so this is uh, a little bit our stock of components that we we do for example wait i i have here our for example these are all the leftovers for different from different projects that we did so we have uh wait show you okay we have the the different posage that we make ourselves for the for the repeaters yeah. mm -hmm. and then you know main place that we cut ourselves yeah you know, in plate you know it's like uh, for example these are all the components for uh, for the repeater uh, of course there is a, a bunch of uh, scrap components that were not mm -hmm. <laughs> that were not good enough for right. it was long and then you know also what is this this is the wait come back uh, Oh, but it's too far. We need to put it. Uh, no, it's not okay. It's a <laughs> part of the repeater. Is the quarter rack, and uh, and so on. We uh, we have some components of uh, astronomia here. For example, the the small center bridge that we that we oh, did. Excellent. And, yeah. So we have all this kind of stuff. We have some. Away. Yeah, we have, uh, you see, uh, other other boxes of all the components of Astronomia. Classic way we do for wheel and pinions, we, we cut a bigger bosch and then we, we chop it off. Mm -hmm. So we keep them all together with the project. We have the, the different Rubion cage of the, of the Astronomia that we did. Yeah. Uh, this these are all stuff that we we produce ourselves i mean everything is uh is here in the in the workshop and then we can go to the okay so this is like uh where i work my my computer place the mesh that we do and then this is the the part of the workshop where uh, okay the, the small car for my kids <laughs> that <they come laughs> that's great day. <laughs> yeah, I see your young guy on that a photograph of it on your Instagram. And yeah, yeah, he's the, he's the last kid. Is uh, <laughs> Filippo is the the third of my boys. He's and, uh, so 102, yeah. yeah, 102 for repairs. Yeah, uh, a Sierra again. Mm -hmm. uh, 102 uh, where we are cutting parts now. Mm -hmm. And then we come to the to the part where we have uh, you know Policy. where we do hardening and tempering, the agathon, and then we have the the small CNC machine as you can see, very basic. 
where we did uh, anyway bunch of uh, of components you see <laughs> are you you making the main plates on the cnc as well or are you still doing it all school? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. When, when, when is uh, when is a precise uh, precise holes and we really want to be sure we do uh recentering with the with wood and fix system that you saw before mm. but uh everything we 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 try to do everything in this cut out with the with the cnc machine very cool and then we have a, a globe <laughs> this is the globe from astro oh, from astronomia you can see it there yeah so it's uh it's here on the microscope very this cool. is the the master himself that he did it <laughs> oh, that's one that's in production at the minute you're working on that one you're no, no, these are the, all the leftover. They were not, uh, some they were not good enough, not on the size. Some they were test that finally they never jump into the watch. Here is uh, all the bench of uh, spare parts that we have. We have another floor downstairs full of just mess. What a uh, workshop. Wow, this is, yeah, what do you mean? You, you explain your workshop uh, like it was a, a small, it's very small. It's, it's not, it's incredible. Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's not I'm okay compared to no for independent. This is a this is a incredible workshop. I'm glad you showed on, on my back. I have a machine that is the secret machine that I cannot show you. <laughs> <laughs> no it's problem. It's just your favorite tweezers. That's all it is, bro. Uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> on the back here, you can see. Ah, uh, you don't see it anymore. You see. You don't see. You see. You don't see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're keeping uh, that way. To get into trouble, we don't want to, We really do not want to get into trouble. We've made it this far. We're doing that is a, is, a, is a machine that we use to do to do the the jewels, the shape of the cams, a special shape for for jewels. That yeah. is something that we 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 learned from uh, from the great master that was Derek. That was absolutely the genius of, of this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I, without a doubt, this, you, you mentioned your minute, your Peter, uh, that you, 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 you the, the the quad cam for, of of the minute repeater. I think we, we should before we get finished here, we should definitely take a look at the because this is the the maestro, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's maestro, yeah. <laughs> Wait, I have, uh, I Wait. Have ah, here on my bench. Yeah. yeah. What's he doing? So What's he doing? Is, uh, if you can see, this is the, the the posage that we did to do the gongs to get the different heights. Mm. Right. So you see, we also did uh, all the all the tools to get this crazy shape of these gongs because these gongs are are absolutely different from normal because they go up and they make a turn in height instead of going uh, outside. So we also make the. You see, there is this uh, this uh, rising up of the of the gong. So there are uh, three wires because there are um, three hammers because this is a minute repeater carillon. So he's playing three notes uh, at the quarter. And uh, yes, we did the money. But you see, we manufactured the the complete block. So here is just coming out from the from the hardening where where we start to see if the shape was right. How we start to sign, and after we we polished it, after we will will go into polished. So this is the the main plate. So this is the uh, kind of minute repeater module, but where we put on it the 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 astronomia system, and uh, you see in the middle is really really classic uh, minute repeater with the three hammers. Yes, and also here all the pieces that you see, but all the screws that are blued, we did, and uh, all the components we did it here a little bit with lathe, a little bit with the small uh, CNC that you saw there. Mm -hmm. So everything is coming from uh, from the workshop. Wow, yeah. extraordinary, um, unbelievable, uh, unbelievable work you guys do there. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, well, I think John has a. Uh, coming up with a question for us, but um, so this is the the, the maestro. So it, it uh, look, it is. Yes. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah so on uh, <laughs> uh, so this one, the funny thing was this small astronaut. At the beginning, I proposed to to Jacob because I found it funny to have uh, Laika, you know, the first dog that went into space. 
going yeah. around. And he said, okay, he's a little bit, he's not, uh, you know, impressive enough. So we went for the, this astronaut. And it's a little bit the same process of the globe. So we have to do uh, astronaut in magnesium, paint it, find a solution to get the right weight mm -hmm. and uh, to drill the hole in the right place for the poor astronaut. And here are the astronauts <laughs> coming out from the casting. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <laughs> It's uh, absolutely amazing, isn't it? Just uh, yeah. everything that goes into one of these incredible pieces. Julie, for, for anybody who doesn't really understand the astronomia before, or, or just to, it's such an insight into the, the detail and the minutia and the, the level. I think you could just, just say the love that has been poured into this watch. It's, yeah, but uh, I mean, but it, it, basically, it was humongous fun we just were you know all the time is always the same you know uh, uh at the beginning you feel like oh yeah an astronaut on a watch well, you know is cheesy and is not uh, high end watchmaking but you already have a minute repeater carry on triple lax tubian so why not have a little bit of fun i mean right. you did already technical achievement right why, why you cannot uh, kind of make a joke, a funny joke, you know? Of yeah. all, and then, you know, at the end of the day, for the final customer, the small astronaut going around is as funny as as interesting as it is the triple axe mm -hmm. Because the, the astronaut is actually turning around too, isn't he? He's yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's yeah, really yeah. floating. Yeah. Yeah, the idea is he's, really to give him the feeling of floating in space. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> you, know, you know, Luke, I don't think everybody gets where all this is going, what, you know, what independent watchmaking is. And you're really kind of looking at it, everybody. There is no rules. So if it yeah. appeals to somebody who is the creator of it and they're thinking uh, that other people will be like them and think that they'll love this wacky ass stuff too or whatever it may be, let's break the boundaries and do something that, that that's – that's his art. That's your art. That's the creation of the teamwork of all of you guys. That's what you are. That's what you, 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 you know, you, you, if there is no barriers, take the barriers off. Why does yeah, it need to be? I mean, hey, for me, I totally agree. I totally agree. For me is what, what is really important and what is really scares me about, uh, watchmaking now that is getting so conservative, like, a beveling have to be done like this, and the watch have all, to have all this finishing. If not, is not eye and watchmaking, and all these rules of getting like old people. I mean, like you know, independent watch watchmaker. They also have to do uh, new stuff, different stuff. Try to do something different. Have fun. You know, not always try to be the the sad copy of uh, vintage watches. Why? Right. I mean, they already did it, and they did it much better than we do it now. I mean, look at watch of the 50s, how it was the industrial quality. Forget about it. Now you don't even dream about it. And don't, we don't talk about pocket watches. That was total innovation at the time, something that don't exist. They don't have, uh, uh, I mean, they, sometimes they, they barely don't have electricity. Now, mm -hmm. now that's what we say for I have a laugh in the workshop. We say, what we should do to really push the boundary of this handmade and blah, 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 is do no electricity watch. Yeah. Do everything without I, electricity. Yeah. No, I was thinking the same thing because there's certain people out there that are, it's handmade. It's, it's got to be, a, I'm not using a CNC machine and I'm making it handmade, but I have a pinion making machine. So that is a CNC machine. It's just from the 50s, basically, to do repetitive pinions. So really... You're not handmade now. So, I mean, I could find fault with anywhere, any way, or anything. I just say it's just like the music I helped to create, you know. Th mm -hmm. there, should, there should never have been boundaries back then. Do I have to put hairspray in my hair and put makeup on and fake who I am on stage? And the music is manufactured because around a, a boardroom table of, of, of music executives, they think this will sell, right? Yeah. Or should it be... No, man, this is the shit that's inside of me. This is the dream of who I am. Whatever it is, I put it out there. So if less than 1% of the people who are into music or watchmaking, if we're talking about that right now, which we are, if they like my art, then, then great. If 0.1% like it, then great. It's my art. So 
there is, should be no boundaries. So nobody should really criticize one dude and uh, say, ah, that guy's stuff is this, that guy's stuff is that, this is that, or this is that. It's yeah, each one yeah. of us is representative of who we are. If you look at Japan, if you look to like, a, you know, Masahiro or someone like him, that's his art, that's his way, that's where his comfort zone is, right? So no boundaries, bro, no boundaries. Yeah, but, but I want to put, the, a, the, 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 totally wanna put a spinning ap- astronaut inside your watch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely, man. Yeah. And, and I, I, I like it. That, that, that's, the, that's the thing, if you want, that is cool about be independent, which make him working for brands, you know, that some brands, they give you the chance to do what you feel like. And some other brands, they ask you to do something very precise. But at the end of the day, the challenge is to express yourself uh to do what they they ask you to do and at the end of the day what happened with a lot of big brands is that they start to like uh like our work because we took their watches and we make looking with uh with a heart with the uh watchmaker uh feeling mm-hmm. a- and that is even for me is, you know is a uh, is like a, a very good uh piano player that plays uh, Mozart since uh, ever, but everybody got his, his, his touch. And he got an, an identity, a way of playing, a way of reading the music. And uh, for, for me, that, that's, that, that's the chance of being independent. When you are independent, you become a brand. That's the sad part of being independent. Mm-hmm. You know, you have to look like this, you, uh, the picture very serious, uh, you only wear your watches. I mean, and wear a uh, a Garmin to run. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I cannot afford we, we my watches. Enough. I mean, Here we go again. I can't afford my own watch, or I don't have time to make it. This is the plumber's pipes are always broken in his house. Yeah. <laughs> so, so here, look, I, I, I knew all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, if this is the first watch they wear, uh, being la- uh, all life without very watch, but. Yeah, that, that's the that's the thing that for me is very is very important. So I really hope that uh, this new generation of watchmakers they are coming out independent. They try a little bit to get more uh, uh, with an identity instead of keep on uh, uh, get ru- giving to their self the rules. Mm-hmm. You know, when you're young, I mean, you have to do crazy stuff. You have to be uh, out of the of the uh, mool. I don't know. You say it in English. Out of the uh, mold. Out of the box. Yeah. 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 You have to be. I mean, when you are sixty years old, when you are Philippe Dufour, I mean, you are Philippe Dufour, and you are like this. Okay. Mm-hmm. You you make your reputation out of it, but why we want to be Philippe Dufour? No, Philippe Dufour already exists, mm-hmm. and it did a use huge success. He opened the path to a lot of people, mm-hmm. but we don't have to be him. We exactly, have to be well, I, I think that is one of the big things about independent watching, and it is what has absolutely drawn me in. It has captivated me. It has affects me emotionally. Is that each watchmaker is expressing his own personal, his or her own personality through their work, and it is an expression of that watchmaker's character, of their their own persona in, in, in a watch. And uh, so, as you said, yeah, you've got uh, Philippe de Fur, you have it, all these different uh, watchmakers who all have their own absolute identity expressed mm-hmm. in their time, in their watches, and in their work. And uh, carry out the line and people like that, do you know what I mean? They're just, they're, they're instantly recognizable, their DNA. But them, yeah. but Luca, but with Luca is workshop and it ha, does there is is very very difficult, Johnny, because he has all these ideas and, and I'm sure his everyone that's working there does, but he has to work a lot of times with an outside entity and convince them that his crazy Luca idea will mold with their crazy idea that they drew on a napkin and yep. usually someone like a Jacob like that where he's. Really, not he's not a watchmaker, right? So he's just drawing something. It's just an idea. Hey, what if we, you know, make a, a spaceman fly or something? You know, yeah. But, but, but me, that's me, that, that, difficult. Yeah, that, that that's the difficult part. That's, that's what difficult. is really is really difficult. Is this? You know, me, I, I get in this meeting where there are twenty 
10 engineers there and uh, I propose something and they have a laugh and they say, oh, you are the watchmaker <laughs> doing your watch in the corner of your, of your uh, bench and uh, oh, this, this stuff, uh, wow, it doesn't make any sense. And, uh, and uh, you know, the, the watchmaker, the, the, you, the, I mean, there are people that you tell to them, oh, we, we should do in a different way. Instead of going to Kosk, uh, we go to to Observatoire in uh, in Besançon, okay? And they yeah. look at you and they say, ah, but Besançon Observatoire is just a garage. Uh, yeah, but it's Besançon Observatoire. It's, over, it's, a, 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 right. observatoire. it's not an industrial uh, tool to check thousands of watches per day. It's yeah. a, a place where they take the watch one by one, and they put it under a, a astronomical control in university. Yep. That, that, that's where you always fight because you have some kind of uh, rules mm -hmm. that they go totally against the industry, and uh, the, you don't have any more power. That, that that's the 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 pity now. You know that watchmakers, even in the companies, they don't have any, any more power. In the old times, watchmakers they were. Anyway, reference also in the in the development department. Now, the only way for a watchmaker like me or all the people here to have a chance to develop pieces for brands is being out of the brands. Mm -hmm. If you are in the brands, the only thing you can do is stay on the bench, shut up, and mm -hmm. doing your watch per month, per week, per day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because well, they, they they they're going to school in Switzerland and coming out with design degrees in CAD and they're making the watch work in CAD. They're not watchmakers and they're not spending time at the bench in all those years. And they think it could, they think this is it. It could all work. Just give it to the guys in the other room. They're just, yeah. the watch, they're just the watchmakers. Don't work. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. And you know, yeah. you know what they'll look at all that crap has funneled down. That started 15, almost 20 years ago, even more with, with you know, Paul Berger was the first breakout as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And, you know, that's just all that does is the same thing it does it did in music. It forces people like me, people like you, or all, all our other friends to come out and go, you know what? Watch us. Yeah. Watch what we watch, what we do. And we you always rise to the top. We're, the innovation always rises to the top. Yeah. That's yeah, what independent I mean, watchmaking is. Yeah. I, I think it's mostly a, a problem of, uh, of structure, if you want, because me, I was lucky enough. Uh, to find always uh, owners of, of companies, big companies, uh, they trust me as a human. Yeah. But, you know, I, of course, I cannot say the name of the company that trusts me, but big boss of big company, owners of company trust me. But when you have to pass through all the structure of engineer, chief of product, uh, uh, all the mm, directors bullshit. and whatever, you, you will never get your project accepted. You have just to meet the, the owner that he talks to you and he says, I like your idea, I like your way of being, I, I will oblige my guy to listen to you and to do what you say. But it happens only when you have companies where there is an owner that can do take this kind of decision. Mm. That's also the problem in watchmaking now. Companies don't belong to people anymore be belongs to stockholders mm. you know you, you just said something there that i i have said uh, on a number of occasions is that a lot of the watches that we see would never get signed off in a boardroom if they were for uh one of, one of the, the the big uh uh multinational brands you wouldn't get uh get see in them but um, yeah, no, because they they have to they have to to have a reason, you know, they have to be a market research for the product. We have a need of this complication. What, what is a need for a complication? What, <laughs> why, 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 why a man need a, a, a perpetual calendar? Why? Mm -hmm. oh, ah, but with our production line, you know, we have a, a big date and then we need a perpetual calendar. Mm -hmm. So it's normal that the, the, the product is just like, mm -hmm. where is the interest? Because th there is no uh, need for the product. is is the, a need for marketing to convince a customer to buy, to fill a market. Is no more yeah. 
There is no ad. And that's a big advantage when you still find companies owned by the owner, where the owner say, I want to do this product. Because they are still product orientated, because they the company was uh, created by the reputation of the product that they did. But that's yeah. that's what separates where in what independent watchmaking is now and where it's going. Because now we all have, you know, Instagram, we all have our own live television show if we want it on YouTube. We all, Instagram is our magazine where we can show which we would hope we hope that you'll show more of your workshop because it's so incredible, Luca. I know you're all busy yeah. there. But we, yeah, you we, hear the noise, but, huh? But, but, you see. <laughs> no, but that's what the collectors, that's what people of who maybe want to get into watchmaking, that's where they are living now. They really want to see who we are and how we do this, even if it's a little snippet. And that is our branding. We don't have time to brand and all that. But really, they're, they can't go to school. They don't have that time, but they, they have this passion for watchmaking as a collector. And they want – they. Just seeing that, you know, it, it's it, it's almost tangible to them, and that's yeah. what that's what really they they see the hard work we all do put in sitting on that lathe for hours and hours, or in your case, <laughs> sleeping on the floor in the workshop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, I mean, yeah, but that's that's, that's where that, work like uh, like uh, like Johnny is doing is very important because what is really missing uh, missing now is uh is this is like journalists that they go into talk to independent yeah. watchmakers they this they discover a war but they really discover a war you know now also voila meet the maker than the yeah. watch yeah gary yeah, absolutely yeah, right <laughs> Actually, you should trademark that right now because that's it that's <laughs> Better than anything I've been saying. Or well, me and Johnny on this whole series of stuff. Okay? That's a we can done. That's it. We're done. <laughs> Absolutely, Gary. I, uh, I'm flattered you're uh, right, still right, running here. Right, you know, but guys, I'm gonna have to say, although yeah, yeah. we easily do this for the same amount of time again. Uh, and maybe we should do it again sometime, Luca. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, for me, it's fine. You know, honestly, I mean, I uh, yeah, fire. Yeah. I have to go oh, home because my wife, wife and kids, hello, kids are sleeping, but wife is waiting. <laughs> Happy days. Listen, uh, well, also, uh, after the um, the global pandemic is is over, me and Johnny are gonna travel around a little bit here or there. So we'd love to uh, infiltrate your uh, workshop with you. I am. I mean, we are always. I mean, we we are a workshop where we have training. We do apprentissage. Who wants to come? If a watchmaker asks, I want to come and. Uh, I have only a couple of weeks to come. Can I come? It's free to come. I mean, like wow. we have, uh, for example, Theo was working here for uh, for uh, one year. Uh, I met him outside Basel Fair. He showed me his more watch. Theo Frey, yeah. Uh, he's, uh, he showed me his watch. He said, ah, I want to go a place. You know, all the big brands refuse me because I don't have experience. And I say, well, you want to try? He said, oh, please, can I come? So he came. Uh, he tried to do a balance stuff. It took him like uh, three days to do one balance stuff. And and so we were looking at each other and he said, okay, uh, uh, you have still some work to do before you get performing. But he's really motivated. He redid the balance stuff maybe five, six times before we get one right. And said so he came and we were very happy. He's one of the, the best people we had in the workshop for the for the last year. He's, uh, he's an Amazing. excellent guy. That's beautiful, man. That's our We have a uh, watchmaker from uh, from uh, Finnish school that they come here. You know, the first one that he came, he stayed in my house for four weeks because uh, we don't know where to put him. It's difficult for him to find a place. <laughs> I have a room. <laughs> yeah, he was living with us. He still, when he come here, you know, my, my kids still recognize him. He, he comes uh, every year, every two by, and I say, we have... Always one free bench, we say. We, we call it the auspice of watchmaker. That, that's our approach. We don't have... Uh, uh, we have, But we don't, you know, you don't even find the workshop because we don't have a, a, a sign outside. It's just a door. Yeah. Uh, hey Johnny, that's it. Well, yeah. that's, 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 all I, that's all I ask for, for, for <laughs> anyone that can can do is... Is, is help someone else, is help young watchmakers. Just help just someone, help someone to, that's what I'm trying to do here in my country, Luca, because it, as you know, it's so, so impossible to, to do anything here. I mean, I can't even get German silver. I can't get the right brass. I can't get any, there's nothing here. It doesn't even yeah. exist. So if I, I'm, I'm busting my ass on this side, um, 
trying to get that pipeline in so that this time, hopefully by next year or so, I can pass it on as well, just, just like you're doing. So we all, yeah, we you, all say you, you're, very, you're very welcome. But for example, you know, uh, we work from time to time also with the uh, Atelier d'Econometrie in, uh, yeah. in Spain. You know, uh, they, they are very good friends. I know yeah. Moebius since... Uh, since long time, and all of a sudden they say, oh, look, I have to do a main plate. I cannot find the, the good German silver. I say, okay, he uh, came here. I, I chop off some uh, slice of a uh, big bar and I give it to him. I mean, <laughs> and then he asked me when he buy stuff, I found a cheap, cheap piece of uh, steel that I can buy it. What do you think? I mean, for me, it's, it's basic. is what make uh, watchmaking for me fantastic is that there, these have to exist. Mm. Watchmaker working together, having yes. respect, share the the knowledge, be open, and and stop this approach where uh, I am the best, the things that I do is the best, and everybody around me is shit. Right. I mean, my grandfather taught me you can learn watchmaking also from the shoemaker. You know, mm -hmm. just he can teach you something. You don't know what, but he can teach you something. But watch what he's doing and listen to him. Then you make your judgment. But don't say, oh, he's just a shoemaker. He doesn't know anything. Maybe I have a better idea than you have. Who knows? Mm -hmm. So that, that's, that's what is important to, if, if, to bring if, back. If you flip that, what Frank Zappa in music said, uh, said something yeah. like, uh, you know, even, even the guy that can't play, he sucks. You can learn from because you're just going to learn how not to suck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Same thing. Perfect. Let the shoemaker inside the watch, whatever he does wrong, you know, you know, that's all the shit. Right. You, know, you shouldn't be doing that. Right. <laughs> hey, I have to call, uh, I'm going to, have to draw a line here on there because we can talk all night, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, I mean, like, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, both, both great <laughs> experience. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, Luca, hold on, don't go away anywhere yet. Uh, I want to say goodbye to you in a, in a moment or two. So just wait till after we've gone off and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll say goodbye there. Listen, to everybody who has joined us tonight for In the Metal with Dan Spitz, with Luca Soprana, and with myself, Johnny McLehern, this has been uh, another absolutely epic story of independent watchmaking. It has been funny. It has described the living in the atelier sleeping on the floor man it is it's got it all it has been fantastic i would like to thank you so much luca for joining thank us you today. thank you very much yes, thank you so much fantastic. Luca. thank you to everybody who has stuck with us for one hour and three quarters going on for two hours thank you very much <laughs> <laughs> What's God? You, you dare, you dare. <laughs> you brave men, you brave men. <laughs> Listen, we would like that. to remind you next week we will be back again, another amazing guest. And uh, it just it keeps going here. So, uh, thank you to everybody for watching us tonight. Thank you for thank you, everybody. Uh, supporting us and for thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Joel. Thank you, Joel. Everybody, <laughs> goodbye. Bye.